totally killer. This is a slasher movie, and it's a time travel movie, bringing us back into the glorious 80s, where the slashers were, were king, weren't they? Uh, it's, it's an Amazon original movie from, from Amazon Prime, uh, released with MGM. So MGM is owned by Amazon now, isn't that something? Uh, but, I mean, it, it works out okay, because being an 80s movie, they can show characters... Uh, watching some of the 80s sci-fi classics like The Terminator and RoboCop, so there you go. Um, it's it's not a bad movie. It's it's all right, and and I remember first seeing like a trailer for it, and it, it getting some reactions, some some criticisms for for seeming like another movie called The Final Girl or The Final Girls, something like that. I, I haven't seen that movie, so I don't really know. Um, and I don't know now that the movie's out if, if, if that still holds water, that criticism. But, I mean, the, the concept here is, is that uh, we're, we're beginning in present day. And there's this town that's kind of been shocked by these murders 35 years ago. These three girls were killed. And it's kind of become the, the town's you know, claim to fame, basically. You know, there's... Uh, a podcast about it, and tourists come in, and it's it's this unsolved, mysterious thing where this killer, dubbed the Sweet Sticks 16 killer, uh, killed these girls, stabbed them 16 times. He's wearing some kind of Max Headroom mask, which I don't know if it's, like, intentional. Like, they never acknowledge it, which is weird, but he has this, this you know, kind of stupid mask. Um, but... And I guess, I don't know, maybe a little bit of spoilers here. The, the main character, Jamie, uh, who's played by the, the young actress, uh, Kiernan Shipka, her mother, played by Julie Bowen, uh, was friends with, with the girls who, who got killed. And the killer comes back all these years later, kills Julie Bowen, and uh, Jamie... With, with the conveniently with the help of a friend who works at this amusement park uh, who built her own time machine she goes back accidentally sort of when she's being pursued by the killer to 1987 right when these murders occurred and it's kind of her mission now to 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 stop the killings save her mom hopefully come back without causing too many time travel contradictions that's the basic idea, and, and it has a lot of fun with it. Uh, obviously, this this is a horror comedy, so its its tone isn't you know complete dread. It's it's more kind of you know hey fun '80s kind of stuff. Uh, we all love the '80s nostalgia, and it kind of sifts through a lot of that. Uh, sometimes it's it's quite funny. Sometimes a little stupid, cheesy. I mean, they're you know jokes per minute in the movie and not all of them are winners but some of them are actually pretty good um you know just kind of like this generational divide like how different things have been in just in like a, a generation right or you know today's culture is is a lot more you know pc i guess and you know seeing how different things were in the 80s like you know this stranger offers her a ride she's like what i i don't in cars with strangers, just like chain smoking cigarettes with her kids in, in the back seat, in a station wagon, no less. Um, and you know, just like asking where a student is in this school and like trying to make an excuse, but you know, the, the clerk is just like, Oh, yeah, they're in room, blah 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 blah. Very easy back in those days, I guess, to find someone and, and, and kill them. Uh, and there is a good line where she's like, Wow, it must have been crazy to fly on a plane back then <laughs> so i don't know there, there's some good stuff and you know it's uh comedic in tone and i think shipka does does a good job where i mean obviously in, in these movies you're gonna inevitably compare it to back to the future and of course they do reference back to the future like hey have you seen back to the future just consider me marty mcfly in, in this movie and that's you know the whole deal um and you know something like back to the future it's it's an incredibly well-written movie. I mean, they'll they'll teach that in screenwriting classes for kind of uh, a, a perfectly set up and resolved screenplay. Uh, things like that has, has a lot of the, the good, you know, time travel paradox. The fun with 
Doc and Great Scott and, and all that. Uh, but I, I mean, really at its core, it's kind of about, well, what if I were back in time and, and I were able to meet my parents? Uh, would I get along with them? Would we be friends? What were they really, really like in a non-parent role at the same age as I am? And, and that's, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing. And it's no wonder why, you know, any kind of movie influenced by Back to the Future might want to explore that. And this movie does, uh, does it in an interesting way where, you know, the mother's obviously very overprotective after all, all the murders and she's very caring for her daughter. Uh, Jamie goes back in time and guess what? Her mother's like one of the mean girls. She's like the wicked witch of, of the school. They call her wicked bitch of the school. Um, uh, just a horrible person. And, um, she's like part of the, the crew, of <laughs> another kind of funny eighties thing called the Mollies. So it's, it's this group of friends, three of them having been the murder victims, uh, they call themselves the Mollies, as in Molly Ringwald, right? And they all kind of dress like Molly Ringwald from different Molly Ringwald movies, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, we're definitely knee-deep in, in you know, the, the 80s nostalgia here. And, yeah, I'm just seeing all, all the kind of fun, you know, differences, right, and, and how way, way back in the day, how, how dodgeball or something like that was, like, a, a huge thing, and, uh, you know, there's a joke about weed in the 80s, or like, yeah, I got a pound of weed, and I made this brownies with it, like, oh, well, I had five brownies, your, your guys, your 80s weed sucks, uh, stuff like that, um, but, I mean, it, it all kind of amounts to uh, following what has been laid out pretty reliably in the podcast about the history of, of these murders so much so that she could you know pinpoint where exactly each girl was at each exact moment before each exact murder and, and trying to prevent it and things like that uh so it, it goes imperfectly adding to the conflict of the movie needless to say uh, needless to say um, and I don't know, you, you, you kind of begin this movie and you kind of take stock of all the characters, you know, and you're like, eh, I, I think I have a good idea of who might be, you know, revealed to be the killer. Um, and maybe you'll think that way, maybe you won't, but it's, it's not quite as cut and dry. There's, you know, the, the, even like for the, the most savvy of, of armchair detectives, right? will be a little bit of uh, twists and turns, so, so, so they do that well, and, and I think where it, it, it shines the best uh, is, is in the relations of, of the characters, so, you know, going back, seeing your mom and your dad as teenagers, trying to relate to them, trying to, you know, do the undercover thing, and, uh, you know, she, Jamie's like, oh, I, I'm, I'm an exchange student from Prince Edward Island. Oh, that sounds made up. No, it's Canada. Come on. Shout out to PEI. Um, and, like, her, her, you know, being perceived as, like, this dorky person. Meanwhile, it's complete opposite in the present day of, of the film. So, yeah, it's funny stuff like that. Uh, it's it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. I mean, uh, again, I, I can't uh, speak toward it, it being, like, the hugest ripoff in the world of, of that Final Girls movie. Um, I, again, this was pre-trailer or post-trailer release talk, so now that the movie's out, I don't know if, if those will stand. Um, but, you know, as, as it is, it's, it's you know, a, a perfectly fine uh, movie. And, and yeah, it kind of has the tone of something like Happy Death Day, Happy Death Day to You, uh, horror, comedy, time travel, time paradoxes, and things like that. Um, which I enjoy. Uh, it, it, it's fun kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I definitely say uh, check it out. It's it's well worth well worth a watch. Um, so if you have uh, any inklings to check out the MGM latest release, it's totally killer. 
There you go, that's my review. And uh, we're doing 31 Days of Horror here on the channel. Horror movie reviews all throughout October. Be sure to stay tuned for more. Be sure to comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you again for the next video. And until next time, stay scared.